Patriot Knights, it's Mrs. Vega. Welcome, sea lions. Here's what we're learning this week in reading and writing. We're going to be talking about the word summarize, and that means to tell the most important parts in a story, whether it's one you read or one that you're writing. So in reading, I can summarize a story using the words first, second, and third. In writing, I can write a conclusion using a summary of what I have written. And in math, I can subtract using regrouping. We talked about that last week. We're gonna add on to it this week. And I can tell time to the half hour. And I hope that you will hang in there for the whole video because I have some fun music videos that I found that I wanted to share with you. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you one page in your packet that I wanted you to take note of. You're gonna be reading a story about energy and it's called Petal Power. And at the end of the story, they're going to ask you to write a summary of that page that you are of the story. It says, summarize the story in one to three sentences using the words such as first, second, and third. So I'm not gonna read Petal Power to you, but I am gonna read another story about flying cars and we're going to see how we could summarize using the words first second and third so here is this crazy picture of this fancy car and a fancy airplane kind of smushed together is that what you pictured when i said flying cars i had kind of a different idea in my mind i'm going to read this and i want you to think about what are the most important parts the author talks about first, second, and third? And at the end, we'll see if what I said matches what you think. People have been trying to build a flying car for a long time. So far, no one has been able to get a car off the ground safely, but engineers keep trying. One problem is that flying cars need wings. The wings must be designed so they will not stick out into other lanes of the road. Engineers are looking for solutions to that problem. Can you imagine driving next to this car? It'd take up the whole road. Two kinds of cars, of flying cars, are being developed that may solve the problem. One type is called the transition. It has rotating blades that spin and lift the car. Those blades fold flat against the sides when the car is on the ground. Another kind is named the sky car. It has large propellers. These propeller wings fold up and can be packed in the car's trunk. Flying cars will not just fly up from the road. They will have to take off from an airport runway. Still, some people are eager to have one of their own. Nobody is sure when flying cars will be available, but one company already has a hundred customers waiting for one. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready for takeoff. Someday cars may be on the road and in the air. Oh, I always pictured uh, flying cars. I'd be sitting in a bunch of traffic and then I just zoop raise above it and fly away. Doesn't sound like that's the way they're getting designed, but boy, wouldn't that be cool? Okay, here's my summary of the story I just read, and you'll notice I used the word first. The author wrote about how people have wanted flying cars for a long time. That was kind of an important part now in the summary, you'll notice I didn't write all the words of the story, just the most important. Second, so I'm going in order, the author told about problems with creating a flying car. Now if I wanted to, I could go into more details and talk about what some of those problems were, but because this is a summary, I'm just gonna keep it short and to the point. Third, the author wrote about two designs of flying cars that could overcome those problems. Now that could be the end of my summary, but I wanted to add a little wrap up sentence because that's going to be something you're going to do in your own writing too. When you wrap up it, your story and you leave the reader thinking. So I said, 
maybe you will fly a car someday. Okay, so that is what I want you to do for reading this week when you're reading the pedal power. Think about summary, first, second, last. Now I'm gonna share my screen again and we're gonna look at your writing and I'm just getting the page all ready. Now we've talked a lot about this research paper that you've been doing on your animal. And we, last week we talked about revising your writing to make it better. Remember, authors are always changing what they write to make it even better and better. So this week, um, we are gonna focus on revising your conclusion. Now in your work packet, your teachers have included two videos that you could watch online that teach about introduction and conclusion. I'm just going to show you the conclusion one because I think we've talked about introduction before and how you hook your readers, you tell them what you're going to say, and then you go on to your essay. Uh, if you need more help with that, there are there is another video out there. So that gave you a quick little video of how you could write a conclusion paragraph. And then in your packet, they have a great example that I'm going to show you right now for the giraffe paper. So here we go. It says, this is for the story all about giraffes. And here's how they are going to start the conclusion with a closing statement. Being the tallest animals in the world, finding food high up in the trees come easy to giraffes. So that's kind of the biggest, uh, most important closing statement that they want to use to start. Uh, they're paragraph and you're restating the introduction in a different way. I always like to think of essay writing as three parts. You tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. <laughs> okay, and then here is what they say. They're going to restate the subtopic details that were in the essay that they wrote. Giraffes are herbivores, using their long necks to eat fruits and leaves from trees around the African savanna and grasslands. And then they're going to tie it up, wrap it up, leave your reader thinking. For more information about giraffes, check out your library book for a book about giraffes. So that is one example of how you could use that paragraph planning sheet to make your conclusion even more strong. Um, and have all the parts in it that your teachers are looking for. Now we're gonna move on to math and I have some fun videos. We're gonna start with a video about subtraction with regrouping. Okay. So as you saw in the video, when the number is bigger on the bottom than it is in the top, you have to regroup. And I loved how they had those little place value blocks that were just woo. They moved it over from the tens to the ones and they broke it up. And just like they kind of show in this picture here. So uh, when you're doing the subtraction, your problems are gonna have three digits for the ones, the tens and the hundreds. In the video, it just had a two digit problem with the ones and tens. And I always want you to start subtracting in the ones column so that you have enough time to regroup when you need to. And speaking of time, the next thing is a little video I have about telling time to the half hour. So this week we're just focusing on telling time to the hour and the half hour. So in the video you saw that they were doing some things with uh, the long hand pointing up in a vertical line to the 12, that's o'clock. And then the hour hand is the short one pointing to the hour, which is four o'clock. Now, um, I loved that video because it showed how the hour hand goes right in the middle of the four and the five, and you have to say the number that's before it. So the smaller number, when it goes right in between, you're gonna say the smaller number, which is four, and then the six means to the 30, the half an hour. So this time would be four, 30. So when you're doing your work this week, you're going to practice that on some clocks. And then the next page, you get to draw the clock just like the boy in the video was doing. And if you want to see the whole video, I've included a link on the description of 
this teaching video. So that's it for this week. I hope you guys have a great time doing these learning activities and I'll see you next week. Bye!